we are talking about grace and the works. Let's go to Galatians. Let's go to Galatians quickly. Galatians 1, 6 to 10. And it says, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you by the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we, this is Paul speaking here, but even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preached to you, let him be eternally condemned. As we have already said, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let him be eternally condemned. Am I now trying to win the approval of man or God? Or of God, rather? Or am I trying to please man? If I was still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. It is by grace that you are saved, not your works. It says, Galatians 2, 1 to 4. 14 years later, I went up again to Jerusalem, this time with Barnabas. I took Titus along also. I went in response to a revelation and set before them the gospel that I preached among the Gentiles. I did this privately to those who seemed to be leaders for fear that I was running or had run my race in vain. Okay, yet not even Titus who was with me was compelled to be circumcised, even though he was Greek, he was a Greek. This matter arose because, listen to this, some false brothers had infiltrated our ranks to spy on the freedom we have in Christ Jesus and to make us slaves. The gospel of Jesus Christ gives you freedom. It will not make you a slave. Let's go to Galatians 2 verse 6. It says, As for those who seemed to be important, whatever they were makes no difference to me. God does not judge by external appearance. Those men added nothing to my message. Galatians 2, 11 to 13. When Peter came to Antioch, I, oppose, I opposed him to his face because he was clearly in the wrong. Before certain men came from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But when they arrived, he began to draw back and separate himself from the Gentiles because he was afraid of those who belonged to the circumcision group. The other Jews joined him in his hypocrisy so that by their hypocrisy, even Barnabas was led astray. Even Barnabas was led, was led astray. This is Paul's protege. He was led astray because Peter was doing something that was wrong. Okay, let's go down. So Peter was not acting in line with the truth. Paul says Peter was not acting in line with the truth. Peter, one of, of Jesus' disciples, an apostle, he was not working in line with the truth. So Paul asked Peter a question and he said, how is it that you force Gentiles to follow Jewish customs? Basically meaning, how is it that you, you, you force Gentiles to follow the law? The law that you can't even keep up with, but you forcing Gentiles to do it. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness could be gained through the law, then Christ died for nothing. 
So Paul is also asking this question. After beginning with the Spirit, you want now to attain your goal by human effort. He says you want to attain your goal now by human effort. After we have told you that you receive all these things by faith through Christ, now you want to do away with all of that and you want to strive with your own effort that you may boast. That you may boast. That's what you want to do. Essentially, Peter was not acting in line with the truth of the gospel. I said to Peter in front of them all, publicly reprimanding Peter, you are a Jew, yet you live like a Gentile and not like a Jew. We who are Jews by birth and not Gentile sinners know that a man is not justified, is not justified rather by observing the law, but by faith in Christ Jesus. So we too have put our faith in Christ Jesus that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by observing the law. Because by observing the law, no one will be justified. By observing the law, no one will be justified. That's what the scripture says. I do not set aside the grace of God for if righteousness could be gained through the law, then Christ died for nothing. Galatians 3 says, You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by observing the law? or by believing what you heard. Are you so foolish? After beginning with the Spirit, are you now trying to attain your goal by human effort? Have you suffered so much for nothing? If it really was for nothing, does God give you His Spirit and work miracles among you because you observed the law or because you believe what you heard? That's a question. Consider Abraham. He believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Understand then that those who believe are children of Abraham. The scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announced the gospel in advance to Abraham. All nations will be blessed through you. A promise. <laughs> Jesus, or rather God the Father, gives this promise to Abraham. All nations will be blessed through you. So those who have faith are blessed along with Abraham, a man of faith. All who rely on observing the law are under a curse. All who rely on observing the law, I hope you understand this, are under a curse. Why? Because it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. Clearly, no one is justified before God by the law because the righteous will live by faith. The law is not based on faith. On the contrary, the man who does these things will live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who, who is hung on a tree. And Jesus hung on a tree on Calvary. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus. <laughs> so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. The promise of the Spirit. God did not give this promise to Abraham through the law. No, it was by faith. It was by faith. So he goes on to say in verse 15, just Galatians 3.15, Brothers, let me take an example from everyday life. Just as no one can set aside or add 
or add human convent or human covenant that has been duly established. So it is in this case. The promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. The scripture does not say and to his seeds, meaning many people, but and to your seed, meaning one person who is Christ Jesus, who is Christ Jesus. Listen to what he says in verse 17. What I mean is this, the law introduced 430 years later does not set aside the covenant previously established by God and thus do away with the promise. No, for if the inheritance depends on the law, then it no longer depends on the promise. But God in his grace gave it to Abraham through a promise. He gave it to Abraham through a promise, not law. Okay, let's go. 19. What then was the purpose of the law? It was added because of transgressions until the seed, which is Jesus Christ, to whom the promise referred, referred had come. The law was put into effect through angels by a mediator. A mediator, however, does not represent just one party, but God is one. Is the law therefore opposed to the promises of God? Absolutely not. For if a law had been given that could impart life, then righteousness would certainly have come by the law. But the scripture declares that the whole world is a prisoner of sin so that what was promised being given through faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe and what do we believe by by faith before this faith came we were held prisoners by law locked up until faith should be relieved so the law was put in charge to lead us to Christ. The law was put in charge so to lead us to Christ. Okay? That we might be justified by faith. Now that faith has come, we are no longer under, under the supervision of the law. Now that faith has come, we are no longer under the supervision of the law. Please, dear believers, please, dear Christians, do not put a yoke under your neck by wanting to observe the law. When Christ, when Christ Jesus died, that you may obtain freedom through faith. Nobody can observe the law. If you have broken one law, the Bible says you have broken it all. But glory be to God who gave us Jesus Christ that we may be saved by grace through faith, that no one may boast. No one may boast and, I, and say, I did it. I did it. It was all by grace through faith. Amen. I, I, I'm praying that I make sense. I'm praying that I am releasing many people of this bondage that I've been seeing on social media. It needs to stop. Amen. Amen.